What's up, everyone? You're tuned in to the Channel Eeps, episode 116. I'm your host, Eatmon, because there is none other. And today, I would like to talk about a chapter in Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act, A Way of Being, called Play. I'm almost done this book, by the way, but I'm doing the uh, delayed gratification because I don't want to finish it too soon. It's just such a amazing book um and every time i reread some of the chapters and there's new insights and new inspirations come into my mind so uh i i i'm almost done and i i don't want it to end you know but it's regards to play creative people listen to this because i think this really speaks to what we do and who we are at the source. So, I want to start that. I'll start by saying, within every artist, there's a child emptying a box of crayons onto the floor, searching for just the right color to draw the sky. It might be violet, violet, olive, or burnt orange. As artists, we strive to preserve this playfulness throughout the gravity of the enterprise. We embrace both the seriousness of the commitment and the playfulness of being completely free in the making. Take art seriously without going about it in a serious way. I'm going to skip a couple of paragraphs. In play, there are no stakes, no boundaries, no right or wrong, no quotas for productivity. It's an an uninhibited state where your spirit can run free. And I want to also read this other paragraph. Think back to when you were a hopeful beginner, when the tools of your craft were exotic and new. Remember the fascination of learning the joys of your first steps forward. This might be the best way to retain the energy that drives your work and to fall in love with the practice again and again now the reason why this chapter really hits me is because in my previous episodes i talked about nostalgia when you think back into your past remember those times in your childhood youth when you're like drawing you're creating and you're like so excited and you know just think deeply of the things that that motivated you, that got you excited, you know, getting those pencil crayons, drawing, creating those fantastical epic battles between the Autobots and the Decepticons. That was when I was growing up. I'm sure, I'm sure yours could be similar or different, but that energy, that enthusiasm, that, that want, that wonder, take hold of that. How did it feel? when you discovered something new, something about, uh, remember that moment where you discovered something new, you l- learned a new ability, uh, did something amazing. Now take that energy and apply it to today. Now, of course, the reality is as we get older, there is something called quote unquote adulthood, whatever that means, or the professional career, you know, day to day aspect in our lives takes hold. And unfortunately, based on how our system's built, we tend to lose our childhood wonder. The things that got us excited, the things that we felt passionate about. The strategy or the challenge is how can we continue and not lose sight of that energy as we go through the trials and tribulations of life, the life path. And breaking those 
preconceived notions that oh because you do this or do that you're immature or you're a child or you haven't grown up like i remember i remember where i was hanging out with a with a mutual like with, with acquaintance friend and what happened was um we got to know each other a bit more in, in a short story and she realized that she said to me you're still a kid you're still a kid to me and i don't know i was kind of like because i was just the way i am it's who i am and and you know i guess she went through the the quote unquote adulthood and mature blah 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 but she almost said it to me in a way that was so, as if it was um degrading as if like oh what's wrong with you you're such a kid you're so you're so childish and at the beginning i felt like what do you mean like this is who i am and what like you think i haven't matured enough like what does that even mean but it's not until later uh, that was like that was like over 10 years ago but it wasn't until later that i realized you know i think i had it right all along i do believe i had it right all along i've never lose sight of my childhood dreams my ambitions my excitement my yearning to explore the adventure and I will do what it takes to continue this sense of exploration way into my adulthood. In fact, it will never, ever cease. Because as soon I, as I lose that spark, that creative spark, then I might as well just stop becoming an artist altogether, a creative altogether. I might as well just like drop everything. So to translate that into to the now, you know, of course, we all become adults. There are there are responsibilities granted. But at the same time, I don't believe we should ignore or lose sight of the things that m makes us get up in the morning feeling feeling empowered feeling motivated to do what to work for the dollar honestly in my viewpoint i feel that we only have one life and it doesn't matter how, of all the money in the world, I don't care how much money you make, at the end of the day, you are born into this world naked and you will die in this world naked. Money is just sort of, sort of a human construct that we created to keep uh, people in check. But we know that the greatest challenge is to... Be in both worlds, the world of play and also in the world of adulthood, a.k.a. AKA the perceived seriousness of reality. Um, that is why I think this quote, which I read earlier, that Rick Rubin uh, wrote in his book, take art seriously without going about it in a serious way. It's a duality. It's sort of a, it, it's a re, it's a reverb. It's sort of like, it 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 it's, it it goes in flux. You have to know how to take art seriously, but to do it in a non serious. Like if you're able to achieve that fine line balance, then you are well on your way of pursuing greatness. I think. But yeah, when I was a kid, I remember I would just like I, I I recall how I was so fascinated by even the most ordinary things. For example, I remember 
such as like the 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 traffic lights. I was always impressed by how the lights switches from red, yellow, and green. Uh, I just love the 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 the, like the the lights or the the individual light bulbs that just sort of like create this amazing glow of of the street of of the traffic lights uh and it was was just so like colorful and i got i got so entrenched by it that i remember i would draw i was like four or five years old i would draw these crazy chaotic compositions of traffic lights they just as if they had a a minor like a a personality on its own i should look it up i I still have some I, i I do have those drawings. I should do an episode kind of going through my history of some of my early drawings, but I, I still have those. Thankfully, my parents saved them. Um, and also, like, even as something as, as ordinary as I remember how I was taking the bus for the first time. It was one of those long buses. And you know how those long, uh, you know, public buses were like, when it turn, makes a turn in the middle, there's a sort of like accordion sort of like thing that just bends. When I saw that, I was I was like, whoa, that's so cool. It's like, you know, you're in this thing, you're, you're bending and all that, just going through one corner, one turn to another, and the thing just shifts. I thought that was really cool. Even now, when I'm doing a run, and I'm running down um, in parallel with uh, the light rail, and... I'm running and I'm running and I see the light rail pass by me and it going over this bridge and we're running in, in sort of in tangent. Uh, and I recall like, wow, back in the day, I bet you like a long time ago, th- this, this was the future. They envisioned this future city where you have like public train transport going from one end to another on over the bridge. And like, it was such a futuristic feeling. And I'm like, wow, we're living it right now or i get excited the fact the very fact that that we have mobile devices that we can video conference call people not so long ago that was like almost a dream like it was like like i could talk to someone anywhere in the world with this device and i could see them in real time that was that was a big wonder or like a big wonder like wow that's so cool now we take it for granted but these are the what I'm saying, folks, is that these are the things that we um, take for granted for day to day. But if you look, if you think deeply and look really deeply into um, yourselves and your inner in your inner self, and when you're growing up, like those things were, that were once you know were, were, that were now like taken for granted were once novelties. Were like Like amazing. So that's what I mean by like continuing that path of being excited. And these are the things that are, are, are necessary to, to rejuvenate new creative, new creativity, new ideas. Okay. And that chapter where, where it's like, you know, you're the first time you had your crayons out, you're just drawing, coloring. I think that we, can still, at least for me, I still feel this way. Why? Because I, as I mentioned in my previous episodes, I differ, I diversify my 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 portfolio into different sides of industry. Right? I get to play in, you know, academia. I get to play in video games. I get to play in museums. I get to play in uh, data uh, data art, NFTs, digital art. Uh, installations, murals, all of these, it's like a box of crayons of all the assorted things where I can really involve myself at. And no one's judging. And if they do, who cares? This is my playground. These are my box of crayons. And I, I especially get really excited when I'm working on a project that's, that, that, that's involving both my my creativity and my code side. I'm coding. I'm creating things. Uh, you know, it's I don't know what it is, but for some reason, like when I'm using, if I'm doing generative art, which is a and basically it means amalgamation between art and code, I'm totally in my element. I'm like totally loving that thing, uh, because you're like building something in code 
it's like building an application, but for the pure purpose of creative expression. That's all it is. I'm not making an application or an app. I'm making an app for my art, you know? So, so again, like these, these, I think that creators, if you want to, if you're having a roadblock, if you're having a, a creative block, roadblock, I have a creative block, uh, perhaps it's a good time to, to look into other avenues of, of, uh, creative expression. Try something new, try different tools, you know, find that spark of that wonder of like how to create something unique. The one, like I go back to that, my previous episode, look for that 180 degrees, something that you would never have thought or fathom that could influence your work or set your work in a new direction. If I were to look back at every step I took to get to where I am today, and by no means am I, you know, a big deal or anything, okay? But I'm just saying that looking at my past trajectory and the steps I've taken, the projects I've gone from one thing to another to another, um, there are, you know, at the at the time of people witnessing me creating, they'll think this guy's all over the place. What the hell is he doing? Like he's, he's there, that, but. As they say, there is method to artistic madness. And the fact is, is that we have our own trajectory and our own path to get to where we are. And it never hurts to try something new to diversify your reach. Because folks, artists have the freest gigs in the game. And if we have the freest gigs in the game, we should also be free to explore different avenues. So play is all about play. We must continue to play. We must show the world that we continue to play because not only do we play to create, but we, I also feel that we play representatives of playfulness to the world because let's face it, folks, this world, is increasingly polarized. They're not playing. They're fighting. On that note, thank you very much for listening. Have a great evening. Have a great afternoon. Have a great morning, wherever you are in the world. This is The Channel Eves, episode 116. And yes, until next time, like and subscribe and talk to you tomorrow. Bye.